We really do not deserve to be up here. Uh, Joey's still in college, actually, and I just graduated college about a year ago. So this is a brand new concept and it's completely unique. We're taking a completely new approach to not just transportation, but business and customer service in general. So to give you all a, um, yeah, and feel free this whole time. Like I know this has been like a interactive thing. So if you guys have any questions about what we do, what we're all about, or any feedback, please ask questions, just yell them out or whatever. But um, so anyways, I graduated college a year ago um, in Florida. I actually, in high school, Joey and I grew up together, you know, just like any other brothers, competitive and pretty much like everything that we do. And we grew up working in restaurants. Uh, probably about when we were 15, that was like our first job was flipping hamburgers at your local burger joint. And um, so we, um, Went to, I went to college in Florida. Joey goes to college at VCU. And uh, I went to college in Florida to pursue professional wakeboarding. And yeah. <laughs> laugh it so, up. Yeah, laugh it up. <laughs> I still wakeboard a lot, okay, <laughs> when I can. But anyway, so I went to college down in Florida. And um, Joey, when we were working at the restaurants, rewind till he was 18 and I was 20, still in college at the time, coming back here to Virginia to work, you know, restaurants, because that was my job, you know, in the summertime. And um, <clears throat> Joey was working in the restaurant. He's like, Jeff, I just got a really good idea. Yeah, it was, um, it was actually kind of funny. I was literally how he said it. We're standing just like this, and I'm flipping, gr like, flipping burgers, and I see where the grease is going, and I'm curious about it. So um, I go home, and I use the interwebs, and I Google, what can you do with grease? And I see you can do cosmetics, uh, biofuels, soaps. Uh, there's just so many different things, but I was really interested in biofuel. I, just, I thought it just made sense using a waste product and then turning it into a fuel. So I just kept researching it, researching it, and getting more and more interested. And actually, in one of my classes at VCU, we had to write a big paper. So I picked something that was exciting. I picked this grease concept. So I researched it more and more, and I found out that it's not that hard. Theoretically, it's actually really easy to run grease in a diesel car. So when I was 19, I actually uh, was online, and I found a guy east of Richmond who'd been doing it for a couple years. I called him up, and I was like, hey, man, can you know, show me how to do this and whatnot? So he was like, of course. I kind of went under his wing for a year and learned how to make biodiesel. So I was 19, I actually started this business called Commonwealth Biodiesel. Um, I wanted to sell biodiesel in Richmond. Uh, you can't do that. You can't just make fuel and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> the analogy I always give is, like in the state of Virginia, you can brew your own beer and make your own wine, but until you want to sell it, you know, there's the ABC laws, just there's a, too many hoops and ladders just to do it overnight. So I went back to the drawing board. That business failed, I guess, but it was all a learning experience. And um, Jeff was on spring break, and he was a senior in college. And uh, we, went, we were downtown one night uh, at some bars and whatnot, and we were catching a ride back up to my brother's here on Broad Street. And we got in the cab, and the cab driver's like, give me 20 bucks. And we're like, what? <laughs> Why? And he was like, people run out on me. And Jeff and I are like, all right, I can sympathize for you there. Here's 20 bucks. So we get to the place. It's like a $12 fare. And he doesn't give us our $20 back. So Jeff and I are like, eh, can I have my money back? And he kind of hesitates. And that, that's, I mean, that's just wrong, I think. So a little bit of fighting. He gives us our money back. And that's when Jeff and I just like look at each other. And we're just like, uh -huh. OK, all right. <laughs> we'll apply uh, biodiesel in a professional transportation service in Richmond. So if you want to. Yeah, so like I said, I was actually down in college at that point getting ready to graduate. And before that, Joey and I, we were thinking of what we were going to do. Joey, we were calling each other nonstop. And he's like, what are we going to do with this biodiesel? I got this idea. I got that idea. And uh, right after that, we just, that's it. We like looked at each other. And right after, we went right to the drawing board, right to a notepad. And we were like, OK, we're going to be like customer service driven. We're gonna be all about the city of Richmond and just bringing it together with, because we get our, our grease from all the local restaurants, we can provide just a great all around service where we 
All of our drivers are very sociable, they're professional, and we have Sirius XM radio in the back of our taxis so the passenger can like adjust the radio because the nighttime people like their music. So it was just a lot of things where Joey and I were like back and forth, like how can we make this better? How can we do this different than anybody else? And how can we make it just an overall experience? So we started out and had no idea about taxi driving. <laughs> we were like, okay, so we get a car and it's gotta be diesel for biodiesel and uh, we get a taxi meter and we're good, right? That's it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so many hoops and ladders, learning curve, just like this. It was just like tremendous. So there was so many lessons with just pumping grease. I could tell you, bore you guys with stories of how pumping grease from local restaurants and we just have like grease literally pouring out of our ears and our truck that I sold uh, I had a, like a 2002, like, you know, most, most, most kids when you graduate college, you have like, you know, oh, you get a BMW or you get a nice Honda that's going to last you till you actually, you know, have enough capital to start paying for it. No, I sold my Honda for a 1990, 93 Ford F-250 clunker. <laughs> and even the insurance company was like, wait, you did what? And I was like, yeah, I mean, we're starting a grease company. So, I mean, it's just a lot of... <laughs> yeah, and it's like a running joke that they're like, I'm not touching the grease skater, which is the name of our truck, with a 10-foot pole. Like, it's, it's like, I actually rode here I, uh, this morning in it, and I had to, like, change my clothes. Like, we have, like, this station in our warehouse. It's like Spider-Man's uh, telephone booth, where we go from, like, pumping grease, and then here I am. I'm, like, wearing a suit and tie, and I'm like, all right, I got to run in 10 minutes. I'll be right there. <laughs> Just right from pumping grease. So it's, there were so many risks that we had to take, and there were so many lessons that we learned, and it was just, like, awesome. I am like, every single day was just, like, just awesome waking up and just doing this. Like, we never saw ourselves doing this. We, we had this idea with, like, yeah, we'll start a taxi company. Sweet. It's easy. No, it was, like, tremendously hard, and, but every day of it was just awesome. There was something new that we learned. Yeah, well, um, I guess you guys are probably wondering a little bit about the uh, biodiesel. Brought a little sample. Um, <laughs> it's not a urine test, I promise. And, but uh, it, So that car over there, the Jetta, actually can run 100% of this stuff. What I do is I'll go, we'll take our clunker truck, the grease getter, powered off biodiesel, of course, and uh, we'll pull up to our restaurant, and we made a little pump, stick it in the back, fill, bring it in our truck, drive it back to our warehouse, then we filter it, because obviously grease is going to have little remnants of fries, um, flies, <laughs> some disgusting Anything. stuff. Dead frogs. Uh, yeah, it's been three times, actually. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. take it back to the warehouse, and then there's a three-step process. The first one is, is you just heat it and stir it. And when you do that, it takes out the water, because you don't want to put water in your gas, obviously. The second part is you add three chemicals. You add potassium hydroxide, methanol, sulfuric acid. I am actually by no means an engineer or like good <laughs> at He's chemical an advertising stuff. major at VCU. I'm a business major. Yeah, so. it's, I, don't, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know. This stuff just excites me, so I kind of like took an interest to it. So you apply those three chemicals. You heat it and stir it for 24 hours, and then you get a byproduct. You get glycerin. That stuff, actually, we're working on making soaps with it right now. Like, so like our seen... business card will be a soap bar. That'd be pretty cool. It's like Fight Club. Yeah, the glycerin. <laughs> You've seen Fight Club. Yeah, they make soap. So, and then <laughs> with the glycerin, you drain that off. And then you have just your fuel. And that, then this is the other weird part. You actually run water through the fuel because it takes out the residual potassium hydroxide and methanol. It bonds together, and then that's what kind of creates the active ingredient that it replicates diesel fuel. So then 48 hours later, you have 100% biodiesel. It's, I mean, you can apply it with all Anything. the restaurants around town. That's why we're so excited about this is because, yeah, we're starting in Richmond. This is just amazing, but like, this can go anywhere. Anyone can take their grease and just put it into their diesel. We did, the only thing we did to our cars is we changed the fuel filter, which is nine bucks. Yeah. It, it works. So we run peanut oil, canola, soybean, duck fat, um, Anything really, anything organic and natural. You can compress it into the oils, and typically when people use it as fry grease, and when they're done with it, we'll take it. Um, and then that's where, let's see, we kind of started, the taxi company started picking up. So every day, Jeff would drive the taxi, I'd make fuel, we'd switch. I'd drive at night, Jeff would get some rest, help out with the fuel. Probably for a good three months, it was just him and I. And then we finally decided to get another car because the demand was so high. And that's like what, when we got the Jetta? 
Yeah. Because we started out with the Mercedes, but. Yeah, we started, and initially we had a lot of news stories that came out, probably like three style weekly, did an article on us. So, I mean, it was literally Joey and I running this out of our house with a phone. Like you hear companies that start up out of a garage, like this is it. Like we, we had a cell phone and a car. And that's, you know, going back to it, we were like, yeah, okay, we literally are just like every day learning how to make this service better and better. And um, so, you know, people would come back to us and they'd just be like, your service is great. Like, not only are your cars powered by biodiesel, like, that's awesome, but you guys are clean, you're, you're friendly, you know, you speak English, you're like, just, I mean, yeah, I'm, they're just like, you know, please give me all your business cards. So Joey and I were like, okay, well, we gotta get another car. How do we do that? You know, we gotta hire employees. We gotta fill out tax forms. We gotta do this. So again, it was just like this ultimate learning process. And I mean, fast forward like two months from, from then we hired like five employees and we got some, some businesses who really wanted to you know, continue using us. A lot of the local hotels continued to use us. And that's where there was a lot of uh, just meeting the right type of people and working hard every day to put ourselves in that position to be connected with those type of people. Like this would have never happened with the biodiesel. Joey and I met uh, this, this one person who had been working uh, with biodiesel for about 10 years. And because he kind of like saw us in our, in our work ethic, he was like, I want to help you guys out. I want to see you guys do well. So Joey and I made that connection. He helped us out and he still helps us out with making biodiesel because, I mean, it, he has this like running joke with us. He's like, you Anderson boys. He's like, I got to feed you kids with a silver spoon because, you know, it's like Joey's a, uh, you know, advertising major. I'm a business management major. So it's like we both have blonde hair. So... <laughs> That does come into a you know scenario from time to time, like Joey, did you turn the pump on? That's why it's not pumping. Like, but so, anyways, just going back, that was really what helped us out with was meeting people, meeting the right types of people, and then we we came up with with this idea. We were like, okay, so people love us for our professional service and taxis. Why don't we start a limo service or a shuttle service? And that was kind of our original idea from the beginning, but that helped us kind of implement that idea to be one transportation service for whatever type of need. Either you have, you know, taxi services or you have limo services. There's nothing really that's like in between. So Joey and I instantly started thinking of ways where we can make that better. So now we started a new company called BioRide, which is a limo um, and town car service. So now we do anything from taxis, shuttles, vans, all the way up to limousines. And in the back of our town cars, we have Apple iPads with wireless internet in the back of those. So when people come to Richmond, they can look at you know what is there to do. They can read the Times Dispatch. They can read USA Today. They can you know, watch the news if they don't want to read it, so. And, you know, by, by all means, it's, it's not like we're solving the fuel crisis at all, but, you know, everything helps. It's, it's the biodiesel is, it, there's practically zero emissions, and our Ford 250, it's running cleaner than a Prius. And, you know, we realize that, and we just want to take advantage of it, and just, like, with the help of, like, you guys, like, everyone is just making it possible for us. There's so much more to it. It's just the, the, you know, the biggest thing Jeff and I learned is just the networking relationships between whether the bar, the restaurant, the hotels. Everyone helping each other is just the greatest thing that Richmond can have. I mean, that's, that's how we got on our feet. And yeah. it's, it's, it's really gonna help just, it's, it's, it's gonna help everyone. Jeff and I are nowhere where we want to be. Nowhere. We, we, we really want to grow this thing. We want, we want to be able to, you know, biodiesel boat. How fun would that be going on the James? That'd be awesome. Just <laughs> everything. So, you know, just like, thank you guys for like letting us stand up here and tell you our story. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting subject and we just hope that, you know, you guys just really have a passion and something interesting, something that gets you, you excited. Every day, Jeff and I go to the office and we're just like, what are we going to do today? Make fuel? Yeah. Like, we're just pumped yeah. all the time. <laughs> so, give Richard Branson a ride. Yeah. Sweet. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's really like, 
Joey and I aren't even really that nervous to come up here and speak. I guess the main thing is, can we get Richard, Sir Richard Branson from the airport to here on time? You know, his jet <laughs> lands at 2 p.m. and he takes the stage at 3. Patty LaBelle's jet lands at 1.50 and she's got to be at center stage. So it's like, you know, it's just great that, you know, people are finally realizing, you know, our passion for customer service and our passion just for people in the city of Richmond. So really, thank you guys for letting us be a part of this. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there any questions anybody has about biodiesel or about biotaxi, bio ride? How much um, fuel could be generated around of Richmond? How many cars could be generated or fuel with just the Richmond grease? Yeah. Well, right now um, we have we five. have five. No. How many how many restaurants do we have? Um, we have legends because uh, there's probably, probably like ten, your ten, ten or eleven. It all depends on how much grease we get, and um, I, I make a, around 150 gallons a week of biodiesel, and it's kind of like based upon how much like grease we get. But I mean, Jeff and I have only tapped like 11 restaurants. That's you know that's nothing. So there's there's potential just for all these. I mean, no one really drives diesels, but it helps. I mean, so it's, we we uh, make it by the 50 gallon batches. So right now we have, yeah, we have four vehicles. Like I said, we're still pretty small and we're looking at getting like three more as soon as we can. Because it's been a problem since day one, just kind of keeping up with demand. Um, so right now we're just pumping out biodiesel. Like Joey and I, Joey was up till one in the morning uh, two nights ago making biodiesel for this because this is going to be a busy weekend. And I was actually helping him out making biodiesel this morning before we came up here. My mom was like, did you find the scrubber to scrub your fingernails with? <laughs> so, Jeff, yes. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, after your time and labor and everything you put into it, how much does uh, it cost a gallon? Well, it depends because some, sometimes when we first started, we had to pay for it a lot, but now we kind of like, like to advertise for the restaurants that we have, so it's kind of like a mutual agreement. Um, and then it depends on the, the chemical cost because it's like we have three different chemicals and they all fluctuate, but it's anywhere from $2.50 to $4. So, I mean, generally, you can, you can be a little bit cheaper than diesel, but so, I mean, that's the benefit of it too. So, it makes sense in both green money and environment. So, yeah. <laughs> What's the uh, conversion rate, uh, gallon to gallon? How much oil does it take to make, you know, grease or fat to? If you have no water, then it's about 0.96 to a gallon of biodiesel. So it's it's good. It's real good. You're not losing a lot at all. And also the uh, gas mileage. Oh, it's probably gonna be your next question. Is it's right around the same? I mean, that it thing gets burns. 45 miles to the gallon on biodiesel. So yeah, it's pretty it cool. does burn a little bit quicker, and you do run a little less RPMs, it actually makes your engine run quieter, more quiet. So um, yeah, and uh, it actually, because biodiesel in some vehicles, it cleans your system out. It does leave a little bit more residual in the fuel filter, but um, it actually does kind of like, they say clean your engine, so. <laughs> You can call. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what our service is based off of. Is you know people will call us and they'll schedule a pickup. Um, you know, it started out with you know as you'll see taxis like waiting at the hotels. Um, you'll see ours there very rarely because, like I said, most of the time we're out doing a scheduled pickup. <clears throat> Hi, could I ask a question? So your manufacturing process for the biodiesel fuel is it high? Over here. Oh, um, gotcha. Is it uh, so you do it manually, it's not automated? Have you looked into like automated processes? Well, there's the, the machine, I mean, there's only but so automatic stuff you can do because the fuel content is different every time. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, go ahead. So I was going to ask, you know, would you consider having some of our foster kids apprentice with you so you could help other up and coming kids, you know, yeah. sort of learn? The yeah. process and the business. I, 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 I would. would I mean, to. it's 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 a concept that can be applied like anywhere. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's our biggest thing. Is we just want to give back as much as possible. I mean, seriously, people have helped us out so much along the way that I mean, that's really what our passion's all about, for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I I think I heard you say earlier that you guys We're looked talking. online to see about you know what to do with grease. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. 
Here's a question for you. I, I heard oil is king in America. You know, little companies like Exxon Mobil, et cetera. Yeah, I think I've heard of those. Obviously, yeah, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're just getting started. <laughs> Anyhow, um, you're just getting started, but obviously you're not the first person to think of this. What it, my, my, my question is twofold. Number one, what is the future for this? And number two, will people try to roadblock you? Because should you ever create a manufacturing process for this, um, the oil companies, those, those guys won't like you very much. It's actually... They like you, but they won't. Well, the yeah. Hold on, let me answer the second part first. Um, that's actually kind of already happened. Farmers have been making biodiesel since like 1910. Um, the guy, Rudolf Diesel, the guy who invented the diesel engine, actually made it so farmers could run their excess crop on it. That being said, biodiesel became a lot more popular in the 90s, and then um, California uses actually like the most biodiesel. It used to be California and Texas. And um, a lot of the newer diesel engines, like from now on, the, I don't know if it's the oil companies, I don't know if it's the, the, the diesel engine companies, but they make it harder to run 100% biodiesel. Um, so that kind of holds us back. So we're kind of just about the most practical solution. So biodiesel now, but five years from now, what if electric car, you know, is, is a practical thing? Like right now electric is there, but we're still waiting for it to develop more. So this is kind of the, the, the problem fixer now because I mean, I, I, they have a, Exxon has a little bit more uh, upper hand than us. A little bit, <laughs> the government. But yeah, I mean, that's really what it is. It's just a practical solution. We're taking a waste from a restaurant. It's not like we're farming for the biodiesel because you hear about like, you know, everybody knows Willie Nelson and Willie Nelson's huge into biodiesel. And, you know, you, you, you kind of see and you hear biodiesel on Discovery Channel or Mythbusters, but this is something, it really is, it's very practical. You know, it's by you going to and supporting this local restaurant and eating their food, you're essentially fueling, you know, their transportation partner. So it's this full circle. It's very practical. So I think we have a question up here. Yeah. Uh, they can hear you. <laughs> I, just, I just had a simple question. What are y'all's long term plans for expansion? Uh, global. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, first, city of Richmond. I mean, we're both from here, and this is our passion. But this is a, like I said, very practical model, city to city. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think, uh, back here. Hi, this is Leah Goff with Connect 804. It's awesome to hear your story this morning. I just wanted to ask you, um, you said you needed three more cars. How much money are you gonna need this year to help make your stuff run? You should ask for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. You guys want to see our business plan? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what would we want? A Sprinter, an R, a Jetta? Yeah. We, we have oh. actually, you know, we have like one taxi. See, this was how we started to kind of give you guys our like two minute business plan. Was we started out with a taxi, a town car, a nice town car and a van limousine, like Mercedes Sprinter. Mercedes just came out with these brand new like Sprinter vans, they're very nice. And people want those for weddings, for proms, but also for like the business people. So we started out with pretty much every type of vehicle and we're seeing there's more than we can handle in every type. You know, like we can probably get like three Sprinters and be fine. We can probably get like four taxis and be fine too. But right now we're looking at getting two more taxis on the road another Sprinter limousine because we have a lot of like high clientele who like the limousines and then probably another town car. So, so. to give you a number, I would say <laughs> right around 150,000. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Um, good, good. So I worked with Biodiesel in the past, and uh, my friend actually makes it every week for his cars. But um, he's encountered a problem with the uh, post injection of the new engines. Have you right. been aware of that? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's why we have to blend with our 08 cars. We have to do a blend, and then with the brand new one, it's even it's a smaller blend. So we work with what we have because I mean, you know, once the engine goes, that's pretty that's the heart of our business. Yeah. So I, we really have to be conscious of how we're doing it because I've I've heard of horror stories before of people just 
inject injection systems just going on their cars. Yeah, so. diluting your, your oil, your crankcase oil. And right, everything. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you blend now with your newer cars? Um, the R is like anywhere from B20 to B35. Um, the Sprinter with the new Blue Tech, we can only under warranty until we get past that. It's only B5. So I don't want to void the warranty on a pretty expensive car. But it's still car. like in line with what we're doing. Um, the B20 to B40, correct me if I'm wrong, but it still emits uh, far less emissions than pretty much like any other vehicle. And um, yeah, so that's, we're also looking at how we can modify the engines in the future. But right now there's, I mean, we barely have time to update our Facebook. So, <laughs> yeah, by the way, you guys should like us on Facebook. It's called BioRide plus BioTaxi. Oh, and if you guys have any questions at lunch or yeah. for that meter, um, we'll have our, one of our drivers and advertising and marketing guy, Scott, will be over there, so he'll answer questions too if we don't get to it now. Yeah, but seriously, thank you guys so much for letting us be a part of this. And like I said, we just want to do as much as we can for the city of Richmond. So. <laughs> Thank you.